Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at DNS and HTTP with a walkthrough of Code.org's 2.6. We're also going to have some practice questions at the end. If you're only looking for review questions, then please skip ahead now. So topic one is DNS, which stands for Domain Name System. This is not on the exam anymore. It used to be in the past, but no longer. The basic idea is that we humans think of things like Amazon.com, Google.com, but computers think of these things in terms of numbers. And so we need a translation system to go back and forth. Code.org's video says it pretty clearly here. Something like this. Hey, I want to go to www.code.org. Mm. Yeah, I don't know the, uh, the IP address for that domain. Let me ask around. Hey, they know I get to uh, code.org? No, 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 it's 174.129.124.120. Uh, oh, okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, I'm going to write that down to the familiar case. Hey, here's that address you want. Awesome. Thank you. It's an important topic if you go into IT, but it won't be on the exam. The second topic is HTTP, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. You do not need to know that abbreviation for the exam. So HTTP, as code.org says, is really just how Safari or Chrome communicates with, for instance, Amazon's web servers. HTTP is a protocol, which is just a rule or a standard, which allows different types of equipment to connect with each other easily. For the APCSP exam, you will need to distinguish between HTTP, the internet, and the World Wide Web. They are not the same thing. And to show the difference, I like to think of it as a road trip, where the internet is like the roads between different places. The words you're going to want to know are interconnected and networked. If you see these words, think internet. The internet will use protocols, IP, TCP, and UDP. And you can think of these like the speed limit, some sort of rules that must be followed. Next topic is the World Wide Web. And the magic words here are linked pages, programs, and files. And you can think of it like the attractions on your road trip. Lastly, you'll need to know about HTTP, which is a protocol. Again, that's just the rules you're following. You'll see some words, especially if you watch the code.org video, get, post. You will not need to know these for the exam. But the real life analogy might be the height requirements for the rides at Disney World. So that's what you'll need to know for the APCSB exam with respect to the internet, World Wide Web, and HTTP, and how they connect with each other. So the last major topic code.org's video goes over is the topic of secure browsing. And they mention digital certificates and certificate authorities. The digital certificate is basically just an ID. Identification, please. But you need a way to make sure these IDs are real, otherwise you could get scammed. And that's where certificate authorities come in. They prove you really are who you say you are. And here are some certificate authority companies. You'll have to take my word for it. They are better at detecting fake IDs than your local bouncer at a bar or whatever. And none of you are going to bars because you're all under 18. So maybe that's a terrible example, but I trust you can figure it out. Here is the first code.org activity. I'm going to log into the internet browser one more time. I'm going to log into two tabs with basically myself. And in both tabs, I'm going to join the same router. So here's the outline of what's going on. We, the human, we know host names like amazon.com, google.com, and that's what we put into our browsers. But computers only know IP addresses. So before any communication can happen, the humans need to ask the DNS server to translate between these host names and the IP addresses. And once we have that translation, then communication can happen. So I'm sending a message to 1.15. I'm following the protocol, which is get host name. So get doctor3 tells me the IP address for doctor3. It gives me the IP address, which is 1.10. And so now doctor1 can communicate with doctor3. Remember, the computers need the IP addresses to communicate, not just the names of the computers. I'll send a message. Hi, what's up? Remember, these messages are broken up into packets. And if I'm using TCP, I'm going to number these packets. And at the very end, I'll stick an end so that the receiver knows that we're all done. And when I look at tab two, you see that it is received. And that's pretty much how DNS works. Here's the code.org question. Remember, this stuff is not on the APCSP exam. But they want you to explain what problem does DNS solve. Well, it solves the problem of translating between computer names, which humans know, and IP addresses, which computers know. How does DNS help the World Wide Web scale so that billions of users can access billions of web pages? For one, this information of computer names mapped to IP addresses, this is spread out among many, many servers. So it's distributed and it's redundant. And if you remember, the fact that the internet is redundant helps at scale because you don't want a single point of failure. You don't want it to be that if one thing dies, the whole thing dies. That would not be scalable. And two, DNS is organized hierarchically. And so we saw this concept before with IP addresses. But what it means in the end is that it's very easy to look up something. So if you want to look up Amazon.com, there's a system that you can look that up. Just like when you look up words in a dictionary, there's a system you can look it up. And if there wasn't a system for looking things up, it would not be scalable. Because you look for Amazon.com and you would have no idea which DNS server I should ask. Just as if you're looking for random word in a dictionary, like question, if it weren't alphabetically, if you 
didn't go first to Q, then U, then E, you would have no idea where to look for the definition of that word. So again, this is just for code.org. None of this is on the APCSP exam. Code.org question three, pick two statements that are true. So again, for the APCSP exam, we'll need to know HTTP, World Wide Web, and internet, and how they connect together. So A, World Wide Web is a protocol used for sharing. No, World Wide Web is not a protocol. World Wide Web is a system of files and links. HTTP is the protocol, so A is wrong. B, World Wide Web is a collection of pages and files that is shared between computers using HTTP. That is correct. HTTP is the protocol. World Wide Web is the files and pages. C, computers will send information using either HTTP or the World Wide Web, but not both. This is not true. They use the HTTP protocol. Again, World Wide Web is the files and pages and all that stuff and the system of links. D, HTTP and the World Wide Web both rely on other layers of protocols for sending information on the internet. And this is true. HTTP is a protocol, but it relies on also TCP and it relies on also IP, internet protocol. Remember, all of these protocols get used together. And if you remember from the video, there are some other ones, SSL, TLS, that also get used depending on whether or not you're browsing securely. Question one. One of these is the protocol most associated with sharing web pages across the internet. So IP, UDP, and TCP are all protocols. And in fact, if you're going to look at a web page, you'll use IP and TCP. But the one that's most associated with web pages is HTTP. So there's your answer, HTTP, D. Question two, one of these statements is true, which? A, the internet and www are the same thing. So www stands for World Wide Web, and they are not the same thing. In fact, AP wants you to be able to distinguish between the three things, internet, World Wide Web, and HTTP. B, World Wide Web is the protocol you use to connect. No, HTTP is the protocol. So B is not correct. C, World Wide Web is a system of pages and files that are shared across the internet. This is the definition that AP board gives you. This is true. Lastly, D, HTTP is a protocol used to provide secure viewing of web pages across the internet. And the key word here is secure. Remember from code.org's video, HTTP is not secure. HTTPS is secure. You might remember from the internet simulator that without HTTPS, anybody can read any messages going through. And if you see this lock here, you're using HTTPS. So D is not true. And the answer we're looking for is C. Question three, which of these are true? One, the World Wide Web is a system. Well, you've seen this already. This is in the frameworks. This is true. Two, the internet is open and not secure by default. This is also true. Remember the internet simulator? You saw that you could read anybody's messages. Remember the code.org video? They talk about SSL, TLS, HTTPS. You need all those things to make the internet secure. So two is true. Three, HTTP is a system of interconnected networks that connects users to web pages. No, that is the internet. HTTP is the protocol. So one and two are true, and the answer is D. Question four, which one of these are true? One, the World Wide Web. Well, this is the same one as before. Remember, the World Wide Web is kind of like the destinations or the attractions on your road trip. This one is true. Two, certificate authorities ensure that a website is who it says it is. This is the definition of what a certificate authority is. And the trick here, which you're about to see, is that it does no more and no less. It only makes sure it is who it says it is. Three, certificate authorities ensure that users won't download viruses from a particular website. So this is not true. In general, the AP definitions are very narrowly focused. So if they say a certificate authority verifies an entity's identity, that's all it does. It does not mean that they didn't have viruses on their web page. It does not mean that they're not going to scam you in some other way. It just says they are who they say they are. So one and two are correct. So our answer here is D. Question five, which of these are true? One, certificate authority helps map host names to IP addresses. This is DNS, which again will not be on the exam. You don't need to know this anymore. It was on an old version of the exam. But the thing here to remember is this. The AP definitions are very narrowly focused. The certificate authority just verifies you are who you say you are. And they'll try to fool you with all sorts of other nonsense and mumbo jumbo. They are all not true. So this is not true. Two, certificates are used to ensure websites will not collect your private information. This is definitely not true. Facebook, Meta, these are the worst offenders in terms of collecting your private information, but they are all verified that they are who they say they are. So again, this is not true. Just because you are who you say you are doesn't mean you can't be terrible. And usernames on Twitter show this every single day. Three, secure web browsing is made possible with additional protocols in addition to HTTP. And if you saw the code.org video, you know this is true. SSL, TLS, 
They make secure web browsing possible. By default, the web is not secure. So your answer is C3 only. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.